Hey everyone, if you're checking this out, you are watching one of the parts of day two of the May International Tournament. Uh, you can see my record in the corner. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my battles. If you see me doing something wrong, if you see me making bad plays, let me know down in the comments below and let me know what you think of G Max Kaparaja because I'm so far liking it. Now on to the battles. Seven matches down, eight more to go. I wish these were going a lot faster. Both ma I have, I've had two matches that almost went to time. And we have an opponent. We have Anthony at 15.50. So here we see Venusaur, Torkoal. Let's just go with our standard. We see the Torkoal Dustclops. Guavberry, Evil Light, Figgy Berry, and Evil Light. So you definitely want to set up Trick Room more than I do. So we are going to yawn into the Torkoal and just Nightshade into the Dusclops. Torkoal is going to protect. We're going to get a Nightshade off. And we're going to see Trick Room go up. So, I want to say let's just yawn again. And this time... Nightshade. So, we do see the ally switch. So we will get a turn of sleep. We will get uh, Dusclops put to sleep. Eruption's going to go off. Hmm. I want to see what you want to do. Let's start chipping down that Torkoal. Dusclops is going to get withdrawn. Togekiss is going to protect. Heat Wave comes out from the Torkoal. And a nightshade. Sand is going to do some chip. Let's yawn into the Torkoal and switch into the Milotic. Because I wouldn't be surprised if I see a crunch come out on this on the dustclops from the tyranitar um we do have to worry about it being weakness policy though and we are going to see a dynamax i would have to say from the tyranitar trying to guarantee that knockout on the dustclops
we're going to see a heat wave come out from the Torkoal. And we do get a burn on Milotic. And that's enough to pop the berry from Togekiss. Who do you target into, though? Max Rockfall. So we're not going to get the Yawn off, unfortunately. Leftovers is going to negate uh, burn damage, but not the sand chip. So I think here we have to go Dustclops again. Weakness policy, so we figured that. Um, we're going to pain split into this Tyranitar. And Max Geyser into the Torkoal spot. Because if Torkoal stays in, it's getting knocked out. And then Copperaja has the speed advantage in Trick Room. Um, and anything that comes into it, rather th other than the Dusclops, is going to take good damage from the Max Geyser. So Torkoal's actually going to use Protect. We're going to Pain, split the Tyranitar, and heal almost back up to full. My phone just went off. We do take out the Torkoal. And we're able to get rid of We're able to get rid of the sand and trick room is over. Okay, so I'm really worried about seeing an ally switch here. We have to try to take out the Tyranitar. And it's going to max guard. Oh, I should have seen that coming and they're going to get Trick Room back up. Good play on my opponent. So Tyranitar's Dynamax is over. And I think we should have one more. We do have one more. So we are going to Nightshade into the Dusclops and just Max Geyser. We probably see an ally switch. We don't see an ally switch. We do see a Bulldoze though and he's going to prop the weakness policy himself. This might be bad. Our speed falls too, so we get a competitive boost, and Milo takes able to survive. And the Max Geyser is able to take it out. All right. And we do land a crit, so I wonder if that crit mattered.
So the thing is, what do we see now? We see a toga kiss. And I want to pain split that toga kiss. And then hopefully hit a muddy water. It shouldn't be a problem for Copperaja though, especially if we can keep the rain up to prevent a mix mystical fire from doing anything. And we see the ally switch come out. So I actually end up healing to Dusclops. We do outspeed the Togekiss. And are able to take it to almost 50% health. How many more turns of Trick Room do we have? We have two more turns of Trick Room. So I think it's just an easy Pain Split and Ice Beam. We're going to recover a little. But we're going to prop Togekiss's Berry. Oh, and Togekiss just barely hangs on. We're going to lose the rain. So no matter what, we just have to... Iron Head, Nightshade into the Togekiss. Um, if you protect... I'll just be able to do it next turn. If you Mystical Fire, Dusclops will take you out. If you Dazzling Gleam, Copperaja will take you out. And there we go. So we're able to secure another win. Good game to my opponent. That was some uh, good ally switching, especially when you ally switched into my Pain Split and ended up healing yourself in the process. That was a uh, pretty good call. And our next opponent is going to be Maverick. We're going to see a Togekiss, Excadrill, Milotic, Whimsicott, Hitmontop, and Dragapult. I don't really want to see it come down to another Milotic v. Milotic matchup. So I think Dusclops here would be more reliable. These past couple matches, I've been going double Trick Room setters. Uh, which is one of the problems this team had like on its initial concept that you basically had to go uh, double Trick Room to guarantee the Trick Room going up. Uh, and then you would just pick one other Pokemon other than Copper Raja or Rhyperior. Uh, but we'll have to see how this one goes. So we're going to see a Whimsicott and a Dragapult. So I think it's safe just to follow me and Trick Room. Uh, if the Whimsicott tries to taunt, it's just going to magic bounce off unless it goes into the Togekiss. Um, and if it does go into the Togekiss, we can just switch out to Copperaja the next turn. Okay, so you're going to see uh, Whimsicott withdraw. An extra drill is going to come in.
Okay, so you're going to Phantom Force. And we're going to set Trick Room. And there's not much I can do about this, but try to double into the extra drill. We probably see a protect though. No, and instead it's going to Dynamax. So it counts who Dragapult went into if they doubled into the Hatterini. Uh, then it's definitely going to go down here. We get a Mystical Fire off. Air Slash. Max Steel Spike. And it's going to go into the Hatterini. Okay. So Hatterini does survive. And Dragapult is going to Phantom Force. So, yeah, you are going to double in too. And we see that Dragapult is life orbed. So, we know that Dragapult is definitely the fastest so it's going to go slower in trick room so we are going to try to max quake in the x drill and we're going to yawn into the dragapult if we get it in mid phantom force it actually uh it actually can fall asleep after it does the phantom force But hopefully this Max Quake is enough to take out the Extra Drill. Uh, it might be tough, especially because uh, Extra Drill just got a defense boost. And Max Quake is going to hit Kaparaja hard. And it's not enough to take it out after the defense boost. So do you go after the Copperage or do you go after the Toga Kiss? We do get the Yawn off. And you're choosing to go into the Toga Kiss. Okay. So here's the thing, is that automatically going into the Copperaja spot? Focus Ash, Life Orb. Let's go into that extra drill. Unfortunately, we can't do any damage on Dragapult this turn. And we do see a max guard, okay. Good play on my opponent. Oof. And Dragapult is asleep now. Dynamax is over. And we have some momentum. So we are going to paint split into the Dragapult and just do one more Max Quake into the extra drill. Let's see what my opponent decides to do. If it switches out, switch out the extra drill. Back into Whimsicott.
So we're going to pain split the Milo tick. And get a special defense boost. And I think that might be our last turn of Trick Room. Milotic shows leftovers. And dimensions are back to normal. So I think here we have to show ally switch and just go into the extra drill. And you're boosting up this Milotic, which is really bad because I don't have any way to haze it out. We do have Pain Split though, so. Let's just Iron Head and Nightshade. Switcheroo. So are you taking my evil light? Yes, you are. We're going to see Milotic Coil again. And we're able to take out the Whimsicott. And this Milotic's ready for the long game. So I think here we just have to play rough into the Dragapult and set up Trick Room. Dragapult takes his first sleep turn. And we're going to see a Muddy Water come out. That doesn't do much, though. We are going to be able to take out the Dragapult and get Trick Room back up. Okay, so my opponent has used a lot more time than I have. And we're at about 11 minutes, so I don't think playing to time is going to be the play. But we're going to just wither, wither the clock down a little. Nightshade into the Milotic. And we missed the Power Whip. So we're just going to keep going for Power Whips. And I think this time oh, we're going to Pain Split the Milotic. We do land a power whip and we do decent damage.
Okay, so... Let's try to hit it here. Nightshade goes in. And Play Rough takes it out. So, after a long three matches, we finally pick up another win. That leaves us at a terrible five and seven. Can't be too mad, though. All right, and let's see. We have three more matches left for, t for day two, and we have only gotten five wins. Um, honestly, day two, I land between six and eight wins. Uh, the lowest I've been is three and 12 for day two. Uh, my day two is always terrible. But hopefully we can turn it around. If we win out, we can maybe get our rating back to where it was and be on the higher side of our usual day two. Okay, and we have an opponent. We have Potato at 1467. Let's see what we got. So, this is a Bisharp match. Let's lead a Bisharp Togekiss. And then we're going to go Milotic Hatterini. Um, I have seen some things with a uh, weakness policy and uh, Ages Lash using Shadow Sneak, Sneak to prop it on other Pokemon. Uh, but the only one I could see that happening is Runarigus or Gengar. And Gengar's kind of frail. So I can't see that happening. So we go Runarigus and Gengar. I think here we're just going to max darkness the Runarigus. And... Air slash the Gengar. I haven't... Mm, I haven't really... Hit a Runarigus yet with a Max Darkness, so I'll have to see how it goes. But the Special Defense Decrease will be good against Gengar. And we're going to go for Hypnosis. Okay. And the Runarigus is definitely sashed. Togekiss is asleep. Takes us one turn to sleep, and Runarigus does get Trick Room up. So I think here we just max Steel Spike. Because that Gengar is really not doing anything. And who do we have? 
nothing really takes a poison too well so we're just gonna stay in and continue to try air slashing <laughs> And I get a turn one wake up. Wait, you set trick room, but I still went first. Did you set trick room or did you set something else? And we get the flinch on the Gengar. We see the Gengar's leftovers. the heck happened you did set trick room okay so we are going to max steel spike and we just have to yawn the Corviknight If Gengar uses Destiny Bond, uh, it won't affect the Dynamax Pokemon. So we see a Steel Wing. And we will get our Yawn off. We will get another defense boost and our Togekiss, which will help us against the Corviknight. And we're going to see a Togekiss come out. So I just want to follow me an Iron Head and hopefully take out that Togekiss so it won't be able to support the Corva Knight. And we're going to see one of these two Pokemon Dynamax. I think it's the Corviknight. It is the Corviknight. Okay. So I think here Corviknight is either going to try to launch a Max Knuckle uh, from Body Press to do some damage on Bisharp. Max Steel Spike. Okay, so you're going for the Togekiss. And that still doesn't take out Togekiss, and Corviknight's going to be asleep after this. And you T-Wave. Okay, so here I just want to switch in my low tick. Corviknight stays asleep. We're burning Dynamax turns. We're going to Thunder Wave again. We still get the Iron Head off, and that's not enough to take out Togekiss. I don't think a Sucker Punch is enough with how much Iron Head's been doing. And I just want to Coil.
Okay, so now you're going for flinches. Let's see if you get it. Corviknight's asleep. And Bisharp flinched. We did burn the Dynamax. I think here we're just going to Iron Head and Coil again. Corviknight might wake up, but we could get one more turn of sleep. Togekiss is going to Air Slash. It's just going for Air Slash flinches. I'm going to get another Coil off. And Corviknight stays asleep, and we do get the Iron Head off. So now at this point... Um, I want to start just chipping down this Corviknight. Corviknight woke up. We're going to Brave Bird. And after two coils, we're sitting pretty good. We're going to get a Throat Chop off. And that does a good amount, especially to this bulky Corviknight. And honestly, I just want to Coil again. Because you're probably going to Roost. We play this a lot better. Uh, steel types definitely give my team a big problem. Uh, being my only counter, being Hatterini with Mystical Fire, and Hatterini is weak to steel type, so it's really hard to get off. You have to have the Trick Room up, or you have to have the Trick Room ready to go. We're going to heal a little bit with, with Leftovers. And I think here we can just keep chipping the Corviknight down. Uh, it's it's helping it's it's helping us out with Brave Bird. And Bisharp's having good damage output, so. And there's also not really much uh, this Corviknight can do to Bisharp. That should be enough if we land the throat chop and we do and there is another win so hopefully this is the start to turning our night around uh but good game potato <laughs> okay last match for tonight <sighs> Hopefully we can pull off a win and go seven and not seven. What would it be? Why am I blanking out? Seven and eight. Hmm. So I'm going to go with Double Trick Room again. And really, 
I mean, Hatterini does have attack potential. We might have to hold back on the Dynamax or Gigantamax to wait for the Ferrothorn. Um, because that Ferrothorn in the back is definitely going to be a problem. And we just see Milotic and Excadrill. So we're going to go for a follow me and trick room. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a iron head and a hypnosis come out on this slot. And can we just talk about how beautiful shiny Milo tick is? And you're going for the flinch. We do still get Trick Room up, though. So I think here we definitely have to go into the Mystical Fire and to the Exedrill. And if anything... What does Milotic want to do? Does he just want to keep Muddy watering? I could see it coil. A protect right now would be really bad. Okay, so extra drill goes out. Do you bring in Ferrothorn? You do. And you're going to max the Milotic. Okay, so I am going to get some damage on the, the Ferrothorn. Oh, come on, Togekiss. Come on, Togekiss. Togekiss lives. Props the berry. Yes. There's a big problem gone for Milotic. Bring your Rotom Wash out. I think here, will you outspeed Togekiss? Just want to yawn into the Milotic and get damage off with Dazzling Gleam. Okay, so you ally switch. I did do a spread move, though. And that does good damage on Rotom. Max Geyser will go out. This is Rain Boost it, though. And Hatterini goes down. I think here it's just best to let's try to yawn the Milotic. Oh, what if that doesn't work though? 
We'll air slash for damage. And get a max overgrowth out. So we're... We don't see Rotom switch out. So Rotom will take the sleep. We could see a max guard from Milotic. No, we're just going to be able to max overgrowth into it. Decent damage. Oh my goodness, why, why was I talking about Milotic earlier? I didn't even bring Milotic. And Togekiss lives on one. Okay, so Dusclops is going to come in. Rotom is Life Orb. And it's about to fall asleep. Blunder policy and life orb. So you are hypnosis myelotic. And we should be able to take it down. And you would draw the Milotic? Okay. Fair. x is going to take that pretty well. Not as well as I thought. So we have to get Trick Room up again. And we have to worry about Rotom waking up and getting an ally, so, it, so we can't max Quake into the Excadrill. Okay, so you're going for flinch. Rotom wakes up. Dark pulses. And if we can get Trick Room up, there we go. So the Rotom isn't getting recovery from Grassy Terrain. So I think here I have to double into the Milotic. Okay, so you ally switch. So I'm still going to be able to take it out with Nightshade. At this point, if you recover... I'm just going to be able to pain split you. You land the hypnosis though. That's got to be less than 50 HP though. So a Nightshade should just lock it in, unless it protects. 
and the battle was canceled. Okay. So we finish out for tonight with a win. Thank goodness, because today was not good. It was not a good day for matches. It was okay. Okay, so we hit our max ranking, our max battles for day two. So let's check to see where we're at ratings wise. Um, we are in five, 5,395 with a rating of 1542. So our rating has dropped 27 points. Um, overall today we went we went seven and eight, bringing our overall record to 17 and 13. So we're still positive overall, uh, but our rating definitely took a dip. But anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.